Hey folks, Damien from Southpaw Designs. I'm always on the lookout for creating new types of projects that are gonna grab my customers' attention, that are gonna be easy to create and that are gonna to lead to increased sales. So if that's something that you're interested in, just watch on because we're gonna create a really cool project that you can create with or without a CNC machine. So let's go ahead and dig right in. To begin with, you'll notice that this piece of walnut that I'm gonna use is pretty warped. Instead of taking it to the jointer and planer, uh, I'm just gonna screw it down to my CNC and use a surfacing bit to give me a flat surface. Then I'll take it over to the planer and then plane it down to what I need. Now, if you're ever using this method, make sure that you countersink those screws down pretty deep because if your uh, surfacing bit runs over those screws, it's going to cause some problems. I'm going to use a shim to hold up that edge so that it will surface it uh, to a nice flat surface. And then we just let it run. Now you'll notice right here, uh, I may need to adjust my feeds and speeds because uh, every time that that surfacing bit stops in a corner, it's leaving a little burn mark. I can plane that off and I will, but I, I want to eliminate that. From there, since I have one flat surface, I'll move over to my planer and uh, I'll just plane the other side to get it down to the thickness that I want. And we will now cut it down to size. Now, this maple that I have is plenty flat enough. There are no uh, warps in it, but I still need to plane it down to the same thickness as my walnut. And then let's bring it over to the assembly table and figure out which uh, direction I like best. Now, this walnut does have a little bit of uh, some, some uh, knot holes in it that I'm going to have to use some epoxy to fill up. I'll do that later on. Form a simple glue up. And under my coals, I like to put a little bit of wax paper um, in, in case there's any glue that gets stuck to those coals. When I take them off, it's possible that some of the wood could actually stick to my board. And while, you know, you can break it off uh, and sand it down, I prefer to not deal with that anyway. All right, once it, we've used the magic of video to dry everything off, let's take it off. And that wax paper did a good job of keeping the... Um, uh, keeping the glue from uh, adhering the coals. And now we're going to take it over to our CNC and make our pocket. Now you're going to see that there is a big mistake that I make here. Best I can figure is I didn't tighten my, um, uh, my uh, bowl bit down enough into the collet and all of a sudden things kind of go awry. And there you have it. The bit uh, slipped, it dropped, and ruined this piece of wood. That just sucks, but you live and learn. Thankfully, I didn't break the bit, and I didn't damage the CNC, but this section of wood is pretty much useless. Instead of scrapping the entire piece, I'm going to take it back over to the table saw, and I'm going to cut that walnut off and try to reuse that. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire process again, showing you a glue up, but I just grab a new piece of maple for the middle and re glue everything. All right, once the new glue up is dried, let's try this again. I'm going to slow down the speed on my um, bowl bit, and I'm also taking off the dust protection so you can see it. Now, I like to do two passes here. The first one is going to be uh, a rough pass, it's going to get rid of the most material. Uh, I'm going at about a 40% step over so it's going to remove a decent amount of material pretty quickly but you'll notice that it gives a lot of those little uh, ridges on there that we're going to need to get rid of later on okay once we're finished we're going to do the same thing again except we're going to turn our step over down to about 10 percent 
So uh, it's going to give a nice smooth finish, as you can see right there. It's going to get rid of all those ridges. And we can go a little bit faster because we're only going about a, an extra 0 0.01 inches. From there, switch over to a quarter inch uh, bit. My down cut bit is uh, pretty rough right now. I've got to order a new one, so I'm just using an up cut. No problem. I can just sand that off. And this is going to be the hole that the dowel is going to fit into. And then the final step of cutting this out is actually going to uh, create the profile. I always like to do that profile last. Um, so when the bowl is doing its cutting, uh, it's going to have the maximum amount of hold. So there's very little chance of anything breaking loose. If you were to do your uh, profile first, then you run into a higher likelihood of your uh, workpiece breaking off. Also, right now, I'd like to take just a moment to ask you, if you're getting anything useful out of this, please hit that like button down there and leave a comment. Those metrics uh, tell YouTube that this is valuable and encourages them to uh, share it out to a broader uh, base. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I'm trying to build this channel and those interactions really help out. So let's go ahead and get back to it. Then we'll start cutting our circles. And we're going to have several uh, little uh, rings that are going to go around the dowel both to hold the um, trays in place and then also with little separators to keep the um, trays from dropping down onto our charcuterie board. I'm going to make a total of four of them, two in walnut, and then I'm going to make two more in maple, but I won't show you that because you get the idea. And then we move to our last cutout, which are going to be our trays. Now this is simply a shape. You can customize the shape however you like, but you need to have a, uh, a slot, or I'm sorry, a pocket for your bowls. And now I'm not going to try to do a pocket. I'm just doing an inner profile because to try to bore out that entire pocket would take forever. When it comes to the smaller hole, however, I would recommend that you actually use a pocket to get rid of everything. And you'll see why here in just a minute. There are two reasons for that. One, when I'm cutting out those uh, interior uh, profiles, there's such a small piece of wood that's left over that it uh, tends to break off and that could potentially damage your project. Uh, two, because of the fact that I like to leave tabs in there, um, those tabs are stuck and they're a pain to get rid of in a, um, uh, in a hole that small. So I just recommend using the extra two or three minutes that it takes just to pocket out that small hole so you don't have to go back in and get rid of all that and then risk having those small pieces break loose. Now we'll come over to the uh, sander and clean up those edges and especially get rid of the tabs. Now for the larger uh, pocket, uh, I'm just going to use the spindle sander to get rid of that interior. Uh, this is what I was talking about. To try to do this on the small pocket um, that's going to fit over the dowel is just incredibly difficult to do. And in the time that it would take to just pocket out, bore out that entire hole, it's going to save you a lot of hassle. So that's the way I recommend you do that. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Trying to clean off the little bit of those tabs is such a pain, it's really not worth it. Um, it would have been quicker just to pocket out that entire hole and then move on. Once we have all the pieces cut and sanded, let's do a little dry fit. One thing I forgot to record is that bottom uh, ring right there. I actually put a dowel into the larger dowel to hold that in place. From there, I'm just going to use some mineral oil this time. I use Odie's oils quite a bit, but I tried to use, I decided to use mineral oil this time just to, to see what it would look like and be a little bit different. And the mineral oil turned out really nice, but I think I am going to go back to the Odie's oil for uh, these types of things. I just like Odie's oil. I'm not paid by Odie's at all. I just like it. Set everything out to dry. And then let's take some mineral oil to our board itself actually going to do two coats of this and then let's move on to assembling everything together. We put each of our trays in separated by one of our little walnut separators and then we'll put uh, the last ring on top. Now you'll notice that it's a little bit wobbly. I, I can cut down the size of the hole into the board just a little bit but I want it to be loose enough that it will fit down inside there with a little friction fit. 
The top, however, I didn't like the fact that it was wobbly, so I decided to glue that on, uh, that top ring. So it actually holds all of the trays in place. And instead of using wood glue, I just decided to use some uh, CA glue because that will um, lessen the likelihood that it will drip down onto the tray and glue those in place. And once we're finished, here we go. There are some improvements that could be made, but overall, I think this is a great project.